Hi everyone, I'm JD. Welcome back to my channel. Well, I'm super excited because I can now finally do this Make a Junk Journal with Me series. Got my new camera holder and I think I've got it worked out. Uh, sorry if I shake you though, if I bump you. Um, so just a refresher, this Make a Junk Journal with Me series, it's going to be in three parts. This first part is making the cover. The second part will be choosing pages and how I cut them to size and all that kind of thing. And then the third video will be the binding and putting it all together. And so this uh, junk journal is a paper bag journal and it's just the most simple basic one. You can do it so quickly, it's really easy. Uh, I taught my niece how to do these journals and now she uses the exact same method that I use to make her own. And yeah, I do have a very um, kind of systematic method which I'll share with you in these videos and any tips that I have or my thought process. And just hope it's yeah, really helpful for you guys, especially for those who may not have created a journal yet. This is a really good introduction, I think, <laughs> because it is just so quick and simple. And hopefully you'll be yeah, going on after this to make more and more journals. And I know some of you have, are following along with me and some of you have bought these digital kits to kind of make the same journal that I'm making. Um, I'm just going to put the buy one, get one free with these digital kits that will last throughout this series just in case you uh, see these video videos and you're like, oh yeah, I think I do want to create one with those same papers. So I will have that offer going throughout this, the whole series, buy one, get one free. I think there's five digital kits or maybe six, I can't remember. Um, and if you just purchase one, leave a buyer's note letting me know which kit you want for free and then I'll email that to you directly. Uh, the link will be below to my Etsy Willow Bound journals where you can see that. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited. Some of you are following along with the same uh, papers and even some of you bought these paper bags from my shop if you're overseas. Uh, they're still in my shop too if you're interested in getting the same paper bags, but you don't need the exact same paper bag. You don't need the same sizing or anything. And of course you don't need the same papers. So I know some of you are following along using your own papers, which is really cool. All right, so <laughs> let's get into making the cover. Um, I hope if you've got your materials ready, it is um, scissors, glue, some sort of pen or pacer. I use a, a pacer which is just like a pencil that you click down. <laughs> Ruler, um, double side tape but you don't need both. You can use one or the other and this is optional washi tape and then obviously something for your cover. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, image from one of my kits as the cover. I've already done two already but I um, love it so much that I'm going to do another one and I know some of you are following along with the exact same cover and uh, papers so let's put these ones aside and we will get into making the cover. First thing is when you do uh, get the digital kit it comes out like when you size it up and put it into Word um, the margins I make quite narrow and everything but obviously there's still a margin, so the first thing I do is cut down the paper without the margin. And I mean, this is so super simple and basic, but I thought I'd just, you know, go through everything step by step. And you can follow along at the same time if you have everything ready or um, whenever you're free, grab your, your supplies, your materials, and then make this junk journal with me. <laughs> Alright, so get rid of this. I'm going to grab my paper bag and I'm going to size it up. So depending on how big your margins are, you may already be able to size it in your Word program or formatting program to have it perfectly matching up when you cut it down. Um, or it might be too small. Uh, some of my covers are a tiny bit smaller, but I don't mind because I kind of like the, the brown of the bag anyway. So even if there's that much of a gap all the way around, it's still kind of cool. You still kind of get that vintage -y look to it, I suppose, because it's brown. Or you could have it really big like that. See how there's a narrow margin 
but either way it works it's fine so just choose what size you want I'm gonna since this is um, much bigger not not much bigger but bigger than the um, <laughs> bag I'm gonna keep the margins narrow and then what I do is I've worked out which part I want for the front and I'm gonna choose this side for the front because I like this kind of purpley effect going on here this is cool too but I've already done one <laughs> I've done two journal covers with this but I like this one a little bit more so I'm gonna put it here and size it up and then the thing with the paper bag is with this one anyway this brand it isn't quite exactly square so it's always going to be a bit diagonal wherever you cut unless you cut it on a diagonal but I'm going to cut it as square as I can and basically I will sorry it's a bit hard with this camera holder right in front of me I'm not sure how to get across there I might have to swing around to the other side um, so I will first of all go flip it around you don't have to do this you could do it on the other side but I'm gonna just guesstimate so this is me guesstimating now <laughs> and I know that you don't have to cut off much from the bottom so I'm just gonna do that much and see if that's good and then there's my guide so I'm gonna cut along that line So yeah, basically this is all just cutting it down to size, measuring it up and you can eyeball this or you can be very precise measuring it all out. But the way I do it is first of all cut down one side and then you can see it easily. So hang on, I've got it the wrong way don't I? So that way, flip it over and this is just so I can see it easier, the white on the white background so that when I go with my pen or pacer sorry pencil <laughs> I can see the line a bit clearer but I've done it both sides it doesn't matter but I'm just showing you this way so that you can see the line clearer hopefully and then I'm going to cut that down And I might keep that because you can make a pocket with that or something. And then that is the cover. So yeah, cut down one side and then the other side will be easier because all you have to do is line it up here and you can see the gap here where you want it and then just rule down along there. All right, then I grab my double sided tape. Now my rationale behind using glue and tape. You don't need both. I'm going to come around the side here because it's going to be easier doing it from this angle. The rationale behind the double sided tape is I put it along the edges only of the cover image. because I have done it with glue just using glue all the way around and that works fine it actually does you can do it with glue as well that's totally cool and sometimes I still use just glue depending on how um, what I'm doing with the cover but basically if you don't want glue to squish out the sides <laughs> and leave um, glue marks around the edge of your journal cover then use double side tape and that avoids that whole um, glue happy <laughs> glue happiness glue oozing out everywhere but I mean if you're careful with your gluing or if you have a good glue that doesn't squish out everywhere then just use glue definitely my glue is a bit runny though and um, yeah, I've had multiple times where it's kind of squished out everywhere and it's fine if that happens because sometimes I do that anyway because I know I'm going to cover the edges of the cover with lace and it doesn't matter so the glue it will get covered over with lace but for these journals because I'm not doing anything fancy we're just going for the most basic journal 
of construction then you can add your own embellishments later if you want but this is just the basics of construction I suppose um, we're not going to decorate the cover we're not going to do anything fancy it's just using the cover image as is to stand alone and then what I do is get these ready and peel them off first and you could use double side tape the whole way across if you want, I find it a bit tricky to use because once you put it down, you can't move it. <laughs> so you really want to get it right in place the first time, which I'm not very good at. So I um, give myself a bit of security and it's just easier. It's quicker, quicker to do glue. That's why if I can use glue, I will just use glue for the edges as well. Glue is much quicker. And, you know, I just, there's nothing pretty about this. I just get the glue on the page and cover it a lot because I don't want it to buckle especially in Queensland with this heat the page can kind of lift off which isn't a huge issue some of mine have done that on some of my journals and it's still fine like the cover still looks pretty and everything it just has like a bubble <laughs> along the, in the in this middle part So to avoid that bubble though, I am going to put glue everywhere and then this is the part where you want to try and position it right the first time but if you have glue you can kind of have this leeway to move it. By the way, we, I use the, um, the shorter side on the cover, on the front cover so that you can see the pocket rather than this way where you kind of have to lift it up to see where the pocket is. Again, you could do the other side if you want, if you want the other way, if that's the look you're going for, that's totally cool too. And now I'm just positioning it onto my brown paper bag. See, I've got a bit glue happy there, went a bit too close to the edge. That's totally cool. And then just flatten it down like that. So I'm just going to make sure it's all glued around the edges and then I just flatten it out just to smooth out all, all that glue and make sure it's sticking fast. And then um, I turn it over and fold it. So the trick with this kind of thing is because when you fold it, it obviously kind of stretches and warps in different ways and you can fold it first and then put the image on top the page on top but I find it's a bit trickier with the fold and matching all that up so I just put it on first and then I fold it but the trick I use is I make sure the front cover is really flat so it's not buckling anywhere fold it over and then what's this called score it I don't know you press it <laughs> And then do that and I can see another bit of glue happiness coming out here <laughs> and then that is as basic as it is right I mean how simple is that now this step is optional uh, I've made plenty of uh, junk journals without the this step I find it's easy it's fine it it holds and everything but if you want a bit more of a decorative element and just that peace of mind, I suppose, about it being sturdy and everything. You've already got this extra reinforcement on this side. So, just getting my glue off. <laughs> so, I'm just going to put an extra little bit of reinforcement on this side. And there are other ways to do this as well. You could cover the inside with an image too. The, the exact same way that we did with the front. Or you can put some lace on the spine or some lace on the inside spine. But what I'm going to do is use washi tape. And I love using this wide washi tape. It's from Washi Wednesday. Love their tapes because it's strong and it's pretty. And I just yeah, really love the wide ones. It's so effective. I love using washi tape for my spines, both on the inside and the outside, actually. And I've done that quite from an early time since I've started my junctional journey so I really still like this method of using washi tape 
and that is I like it with the washi tape because it adds that decorative element but if you don't have washi tape you don't need it at all so <laughs> let me just get rid of the rubbish and here it is so I'm just gonna make sure it's I'm gonna fold properly and there it is all right so <laughs> that is the cover <laughs> really really simple um, and <laughs> I hope you like if you have any questions um, do ask I I'll always read your comments and reply and respond to any questions that you may have if I didn't explain anything clear enough or anything um, and then yeah in the next video I'll go into the choosing of papers it may that one go over two videos I'm not sure because it will just depend on how long it takes to fold everything cut everything down choose everything but um, yeah that will be next and if you want um, I'll leave the link below to Willow Bound Journal's the Facebook group page if you want to share your covers <laughs> um, or share your materials or just share your process and any thoughts or questions you can also share on that page too. Um, would love to see what you're creating and cheer you guys on <laughs> and encourage each other in our junk journal making journey. So that's the cover, really basic, go nuts if you want to make more than one. I probably am, I've still got a few covers here. Um, you know what, we've still got like 15 minutes in this video so you can say goodbye now if you want but I'm going to make a few more actually because I'm going to do this anyway. Might as well see if I can do a little craft and chat little thing like Gail does. <laughs> So I've already printed this one out knowing that I wanted to make a cover with this one because this is one of my favourites, the blue. And this is one of the earliest ones I did. So um, I did these artworks when I was in year 12 at school for my final kind of year 12 art project. Um, and I was working with a lot of watercolour effects throughout the year. And these were the first ones I did where I really, that's when I knew what I was going to do. As soon as I found this effect, I was like, yes, <laughs> this is awesome. And it reminded me, I know it may be a very loose interpretation, but for me, it reminded me of Monet's water lilies. And <laughs> I know, I know, it's more of an abstract version <laughs> of, of that. But I love this ocean kind of colours and the magical, mystical scene it kind of takes me into. In fact, I would be happy if I put that on my wall. <laughs> frame some of these. Alright, so I'm going to grab my next paper bag and yeah, so if you missed what I did in the first part of the video, let's try again with this one. So I'm going to match it up and just see where I want the front. And another thing, if I'm not sure, I'll fold it over and see what it looks like. Just to choose. So I like that. Versus. I really like that too, but I'm liking these dark colours or shades there. So I'm gonna. Those tones are really cool for a bit of um, like difference to look at. So again, I'm just going to, I kind of, I don't need to measure this part because I already know how much roughly I need to take off. And again, it doesn't really matter how much you take off. I mean, don't take off a heap of it, <laughs> a heap of it, but it just depends on what size margin you want. If you want a big margin or a small margin. Just measure that up and see if I got it right. Yes. All right, then I'm going to flip it over, match it up again. <laughs> and try not to move it. <laughs> and grab my ruler, and so I can see 
I don't know if you can see on camera very well, sorry, but I can see the margin here, I can see the edge of the page there, so I know I can just line it up and rule it. Trim that down. Oh, I forgot to mention, I keep forgetting to mention, but I do have a print option now available in my Etsy for these paper packs. So they are digital kits, but there's a print option as well if you're interested. Because um, I was going to say, when I print them, it's a very glossy type of paper, and <laughs> if you put it down here, it's like it just moves because it's so shiny and slippery. <laughs> so it's a little hard to work with. But this side, because there's nothing printed on it, this is fine. This doesn't move. It's like fine. I mean, <laughs> it moves, but not like ridiculous out of control movement <laughs> like the other side. All right, so I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape. I hope I was in frame for this. <laughs> oh dear. So let me know if you're following along with me. I'd love to know who is. And let me know what kind of journal you're making, if you're making the same one with the papers as me or if you, what kind of theme are you working with, is it totally eclectic or what, I would love to know. I think it's so fun that we're doing this together. Crafting together is so fun um, with company but um, yeah when you're on YouTube filming it's kind of a very you're just a bit isolated doing this whole thing, chatting away. So it's nice to know though that other people would be making this with me. And I've got the whole day free, so I'm just going to nut out these videos one after the other. And I need to do that anyway because I just got to keep the momentum up and remember what I said in the last video so I'm not repeating myself or any of that kind of thing and it's just going to be literally making it all in one go so that's what it would be like I'll just make this in one go and now I've done too much over the edge here with that tape so I'm going to trim that down And then after this series is finished, I thought I would, because you saw all those other covers, I've got 10 covers already made, I thought I'll just put the camera on and do like a craft, a craft and chat along with me as I make all those 10 journals. I'm not sure if I'll film the whole making of those 10 journals, but um, at least one and we'll see how it goes from there. Because I'm going to be making them anyway and now that I'm a bit more... <laughs> I don't know, a bit better at filming and chatting at the same time. I may be able to film more of that process. And I will try to do that anyway with my other journals and craft with me videos. <laughs> but look at me, I, I, can, I can ramble. <laughs> and I will be sharing in one of the craft with me videos um, more books that have helped my mental health, helped me in my mental health journey because I realized that I didn't mention <laughs> all of them at all. I think I only mentioned three, but there were so many more than that that helped. And I realized after the video, I was like, oh man, I completely forgot there's so many more. And I'll pull them off my bookshelf and show them to you as well. Because I know some of you said that was really helpful. But yeah, I'll do that when I do like a craft with me, making embellishments or something. Actually, I've got quite a few embellishments to share with you. I've got a backlog of videos actually. <laughs> so many things I've been working on. Alright. Here we go. <laughs> And there is my cover. Nice and quick and simple and easy and I really hope these videos are showing that and bringing that across. 
and because there's so many things you can do with the paper bag journal. I've made so many different types. You can do any theme. You can dress it up and embellish it as much as you want. Or you can keep it real simple and basic in just a writing journal. Alright, there's my cover. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I do like this one. I might have to make an ocean underwater themed one with this. <laughs> then I'll grab my washi tape. Stick it down. So yeah, Washi Wednesday, they're on Etsy. Did I mention that? If anyone is interested in um, their beautiful tapes, I can link it below if I remember, because by the time I put, film all these videos and put them up, <laughs> I always forget what I, what I talk about in a video <laughs> and what I say I'll link to. But if I haven't linked it and you want to find it, um, you just find type in Washi Wednesday in Etsy. Or just remind me in the comments and I can um, link it in the description box. Alright, there we go. Two journal covers done. And so simple, really, really quick. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you then. Bye.